You're listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and this is the podcast where you will get expert advice about the heavy duty parts you buy and keep you informed about what's happening in the industry. This episode is sponsored by TruckPartsInventory.com. Lowering costs per mile is all about finding the right part quickly. At TruckPartsInventory.com, you will save time by searching inventory from around North America in one place. You will save money by having the option of buying new, used, or aftermarket parts. You'll save yourself work by sending a parts request and having companies contact you. TruckPartsInventory.com is easy to use and it's free. Go to TruckPartsInventory.com today. Spicer U-joints have been the industry standard for heavy-duty applications for years. Most of my customers who work in off-road conditions swear by the Spicer U-joint. In episode 16, I talked about the differences between Spicer Genuine OE and Spicer Select. Today, I am excited to have Scott Donnelly with us from Dana Incorporated, and we're going to expand on that conversation. We're going to talk about their product lines like Spicer, and we're going to talk about some of the new innovations that are available. Scott, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Jamie. I appreciate it. Dana is a large company. Can you give us a quick overview of what you manufacture? Yes, we have multiple uh, divisions with product focus. We have a light vehicle group that will produce drive shafts, axles, uh, electric axles, uh, power technology, cooling, uh, battery technology type things where uh, companies that are building hybrid drive lines will come to us to cool their electric systems. Uh, and it is very, a very good group within our company because uh, they're very successful. And it rolls up into one of our new products that I'm going to talk to uh, talk with you about later. So uh, that will uh, that will roll up very well. Another group we have is commercial vehicle. We produce the uh, steer beam axles, the drive axles, the heavy duty drive shafts. Uh, in the near future, we're going to be producing electric drive axles. And so the technology is changing, and we are at the forefront of those changes. So we are excited to see what's going to happen with that. Uh, in addition to light vehicle and commercial vehicle, we have our off-highway group. Uh, they are going to be working with the larger products in the mining and agricultural applications, uh, planetary uh, axles, uh, some electrification in that market as well. But they're a very big part of our overall product portfolio. And a lot of our technology can read across from one division to another, albeit not the same size product, but the technology and the concepts behind it. So that is... Uh, it's a, it's a great tool to have in our uh, toolbox. Before we get into the, you know, the different products that you have, I was really wanting to talk to you a little bit about the company itself. What fundamental underlying manufacturing and business principles, you know, make your company as good as it is? Because boy, do people ever rave about the products that you manufacture. Well, um, it's, we appreciate the fact that they rave about our products and we appreciate it even more that they continue to, to trust our products. Uh, we've been in the business for 115 years uh, from the days of the first encased universal joint all the way up to the latest electric drive axles underneath commercial trucks. Um, our, our philosophy has never changed. It has always been to create an innovative product that meets our customers' needs. Uh, and in those product innovations, we will improve our manufacturing processes. We will improve our raw materials that we use. Uh, we are never sitting still waiting for time to pass without making an improvement, a change, or something to make our products better for our customers. Our, our goal is to be the one people ask for when they walk in the door to buy a replacement part. So continuous improvement is the name of the game. Yes, and we have our, our plants have continuous improvement meetings every day. Uh, we call them Dana Diamond meetings, and they go through the major topics at the plant, supplier uh, safety, quality, cost, uh, all those different types of things. But the first and foremost thing is always safety. And uh, it's, it's the only way to do it because we have so many different operations and so many facilities around the world. If we did not have people focusing on safety, then we would have some, I would imagine, some bad results. 
So as we record this episode, we're experiencing the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. How have the principles that you've been using as a business empowered your company to cope with this unprecedented time? Well, the, the improvements in technology that we have made have allowed me to do basically this, this interview with you today because as of this past Monday, all of the salaried staff at our world headquarters and in many of our facilities around the world have been ordered to work from home. Um, I am set up to where I can do every single function that I would normally do in the office, except for meeting customers or uh, coworkers face to face. I can do all of it from home and there is no disconnection. There's no delay. I can get into our drafting systems. I can get into our customer service systems. I can do everything that I do in the office here at home without any break in continuity. So you see, as you were talking about how important safety was and how important innovation is in your company, you can see the direct connection of when something unexpected happens, you're empowered to be able to take action quickly, to be able to protect and, and, and worry about people's safety primarily, but then also to empower them to get the job done. And so that is a demonstration of how that, you know, that, that philosophy actually carries over in unprecedented times. That's fantastic. Exactly. And, and like you said, it, these are times that no one ever prepared for. I don't know that anyone ever thought, sat down and thought, what's the worst case scenario we could get to? And that this was something they put down on paper. So uh, our management team, our executive leadership team, uh, they have literally gone from zero to 110 in, in an instant, and they are on top of it. We had a meeting yesterday where we talked about all the things coming our way, and the most important thing was that we are all in this together, even though we may not be together. So the, the company is very strong, very resilient. Uh, they're prepared, and, uh, and so are we. And, and, and the reason we're prepared as employees is because our leadership team prepared beforehand. That's fantastic. Yes, these are unprecedented times for sure. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and we've been speaking with Scott Donnelly of Dana Incorporated. I'm excited to talk to you about some of the new things that you're getting involved in. So Dana has developed some new products for 2020. Tell me about what you've been working on. Okay. One of our big new, our large new offerings in our aftermarket group, which is our fourth group of our company, uh, is the Spectre Select product that you previously covered in a uh, previous bo- uh, broadcast, I believe it was back in November. Um, I've listened to that, multiple employees that I work with have listened to it, and we really enjoyed uh, your coverage of the product and how the market sees it. Um, to your point that you made in your video, it is, it is not OE genuine, but it is designed, engineered, and tested by Dana. Um, we have created the Spicer Select product as a lower cost initial alternative to Spicer OE. Um, say someone purchases a truck that's 12 to 15 years old and they realize they need new U-joints. They may not want to spend the OE price on genuine Spicer. So we offer them an alternative that keeps them within the Spicer family. Uh, it's going to fit. It's going to function. It's going to work the same way as genuine Spicer does it's going to be at a lower price point. Um, Our engineers in Maumee uh, spec'd what these parts had to be able to do. And these parts are anything from U-joints to diff bearing kits to center bearings. And most recently, our ring and pinion offerings for competitive products. Um, A lot of these products are made overseas. uh, And I will say the one thing, uh, that I'm excited about is the ring and pinions that we are producing for the aftermarket Spicer Select program are made in our Toluca facility where all of the other genuine OE ring and pinions are made for the commercial market. They're using the same equipment, uh, the same processes. So they're going to get the same manufacturing control on those parts that we have on our genuine product. I really like the approach that you've taken with the Spicer Select product line because the reality is is that most fleets are not just 500 of the same truck year make model. A lot of people are dealing, you know, especially if they're off-road or if they're in heavy duty, they have vocational fleets. They have a wide range of equipment. And so some equipment has certain specifications and needs and other equipment just doesn't have that same requirement. So I've, I, I love the continuity and the opportunity to be able to bring in one product line to cover all of the needs of a fleet. 
And, and that's the reason we developed that program is we wanted to be the one-stop shop where someone could go to take care of their equipment in their fleet that, like you said, may not be all the same chassis. It may not be all one brand. We wanted to be able to offer a product that was engineered and designed and tested by us that they can put in their products. They will expect the same performance level and uh, quality that Dana is known for. So where have you, or where else have you brought some innovation to the heavy duty world? What other products have you been developing? What's going on right now? Well, as, as you and I both saw at heavy duty aftermarket week back in uh, November or January, I should say, uh, Dana is getting into the electrified powertrain. Uh, offering. Uh, we have just entered an agreement with Peterbilt and Kenworth to produce uh, medium duty battery electric vehicle powertrains. Uh, and this is from the control cradle at the front of the truck all the way back to the axle at the back of the vehicle. We are the only manufacturer that has the technology for the inverters, the motors, the control cradles, the axles, the drive shafts, everything. Uh, we can integrate it because we own all of it. We have all the design control. Uh, the latest offering that we have uh, for Peterbilt and Kenworth is a battery electric vehicle with a 200 mile range. So it's gonna be perfect for a medium duty delivery truck that is starting and stopping frequently. It's going up and down hills so that they can go into the regenerative modes. Uh, it, is, it is a very exciting product to see uh, from the aftermarket side as well as the OE side because as these electric vehicles come to market, our aftermarket team is already getting things set up to have service parts out there and service networks so that if someone should need some assistance out on the road, they're not sitting out there with no help. What kind of training will be required for parts people as they start to have to supply those parts? Because that one of the things about heavy duty, especially, and I know this is more of a, of a mid-range product line, but it, it hasn't changed a whole lot in a very long time. And right. so all of a sudden now parts people, when they think of electrification, it's a completely new game. So what kind of support will be available for your distribution channels? Uh, we will have the same support uh, level for the, uh, the electrification as we do with the standard drive axles you see today. Uh, we are working right now to identify where to best position those products and for which products that we put in those locations. Uh, we're going to be offering everything from the control cradle components, uh, the auxiliary systems, braking, um, heating and air conditioning, that type of thing. The electric cables that connect to the electric motors, the motors themselves, along with the inverters. Uh, everything that will be part of that bill of material on the original equipment truck will be in some way, shape or form offered in the aftermarket business. Now for a, a shop person or a counter person to order that part, they would simply pull the part number off of the component in the vehicle, and that part number will be what they would order straight from Dana. Uh, there will probably not be a serviceable component uh, type th uh, situation in the near in the early stages, because these parts and products are very very intricate. Uh, you're dealing with electric motors. You're dealing with the computer controlled controllers. Uh, there's a lot of technology in there, so it would most likely be a remove and replace type of function. So. One of the things that a lot of people are interested in, it's obvious that electrification is the direction that we're going. How will it affect people who are in more severe duty applications? Because a lot of mechanics I've talked to, a lot of truck drivers I've talked to, they're kind of concerned about what it's going to look like to take one of these trucks, you know, to an oil patch or through a logging experience with electrified axles and, and how it's going to stand up to that. Do you have any thoughts on that? I'd really like to know. At this point, we're not in, uh, in production or in development of a class eight type of truck where you would see that in an oil patch or a logging application. But those are all considerations I know they're working on. I've seen some of the prototype axles and the way they've configured them uh, and the question of protection and durability is very much in the forefront of how they design these axles. Because if we were to build it in a manner that it's very, uh, how would you say, it's likely to get damaged. Like if in a, in a logging environment, someone's gonna run up, you know, run down a path and hit a stump. Well, we have to be able to make sure that axle can survive that just like a standard drive shaft driven axle would as well. 
Right. And you've been manufacturing differentials for those really heavy duty applications. Plus you mentioned you're off highway with planetary. So Dana has been in this world for a long time. It's not like you don't understand the conditions that the equipment has to operate in. So that's really good. So people who have been talking to me about it and are worried, you heard it here first. They are very, very focused on protection and on durability. So we exactly. can we can trust what's going to come down from Dana because of their engineering background and the fact that they've worked with these types of uh, extreme duty applications. So when the product does come, those con- considerations will have been thought through. Right. And and like I said, our, our work with Peterbilt and Kenworth will most assuredly be tested out at their tech center in Seattle and north of Seattle. I've been there multiple times and they can pretty much shake a truck to pieces if they want to uh, with all of the events that they have at their facility. It's a beautiful place, but it is one of the toughest engineering environments I've ever seen. And uh, we have uh, deadlines to deliver trucks to them so that they can do exactly that. That's fantastic. So is there any other products that you want to specifically talk about? My, uh, the one that I'm the most excited about is the electrification because uh, as the quality engineer for the aftermarket, as well as the training manager, I get to see all this stuff way ahead of time uh, versus everybody else. So I've, I'm seeing this, I'm very excited and uh, to just know that it's coming and what it's going to do to the market. Um, Dana is going to be out front. We have the ability, like I said, to engineer the whole system. Um, we can sit down with a customer and ask them, how far do you need to go? How many stops will you make? We can get into the, the finite details of their application and develop and design a system that exactly meets their needs. When I was listening to another uh, podcast about the electrification of trucks, one of the things they were talking about was being able to recoup a little bit of, of battery life by generating power going downhill and braking and things like that. Is your technology integrating with those types of regeneration technologies or is that completely separate? I don't know a lot about it, so please educate no. me. Uh, it, it's a lot of times it's called regenerative braking or when you go into the coast side of the powertrain. You've let off of the accelerator, the vehicle is slowing down. They can be set up and controlled as to how how much you come off the accelerator pedal before it enters a regenerative mode. Our axles will have the regenerative regenerative mode capability. Uh, that is built in from the beginning. And as I said, our, our battery electric vehicle for the medium duty, Peterbilt's and Kenworth's, that's how we will get the 200 mile range is when they are going up and down hills and they're slowing down we will recoup that energy as much as we can when they've let off the accelerator pedal and they've dropped down to a certain speed, they can then uh, catch that cap or they can then capture that energy and put it back into the batteries. And what I think people sometimes they jump to the conclusion is well, 200 miles. That, that's not a long haul situation. Exactly. These are the, this technology is going to be introduced for very specific applications and a lot of you know a recent survey said that a lot of trucking routes are less than 90 miles per day and so it fits well within the 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 needs for those specific applications if you're outside of that this isn't going to be for you at least not right now with the current technology exactly right at least not right now but in the near future we'll be able to service those markets as well like i said we are a company that innovates And I know the guys and gals back at the office that are working on these products right now. Uh, The next two years, uh, we're going to turn the trucking industry right over on its head and show them how the innovative products from Dana can help them achieve their goals. Uh, Like you said earlier, 90 miles in a day, that's not a lot. But what do most of those trucks do when they're in between stops? They're sitting there idling. An electric vehicle, you pull up, you shut the vehicle down, and you get out of it. You're not burning any fuel. You're not wasting any money. The truck is sitting there waiting for you to come back in, energize the system, and drive off to your next stop. That's where our powertrain plays perfectly in that market because we can do that all day long on any chassis you want to put it on. A question because I, I 
like my background, when I was working at my first job uh, towards, I was there for 10 years and we were remanufacturing and eventually we got into relining brakes. So I've always got kind of a special place in my heart for the brake industry. How does this electrification of axles and so how is that going to impact the braking industry? Is this going to make it so that brakes don't need to be replaced as often? Is it going to fundamentally change the braking systems? I I would really be curious about that. Uh, Honestly, I, I have not gotten into that level of detail, but I know with the regenerative braking, um, as I said, we can set at which point the axle starts to regenerative brake and therefore start slowing you down. Uh, If you've ever driven a Tesla, a lot of people say you can literally drive the car with one foot because when you let off of the accelerator pedal, and I keep wanting to say gas pedal, but when you let off the accelerator, a certain amount, the car starts to slow down because the electric motor is now going into regenerative. So instead of powering the vehicle, it's using the vehicle's momentum and speed to turn that motor and generate the electricity back. So that's that's a, a great way to recoup the energy um, and also save on those brake linings. I don't know, honestly, that we have uh, done any studies or tests to see what length uh, we might see brake linings go to. It, I'm sure it will be something that uh, someone will come up with a, a better solution that you know wears better, wears longer, and it's a, it's a cooler operating product if you've got an electric motor helping slow things down. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, other than tires, wheel end and brakes is a place that people spend an enormous amount right. of money. So this is good news for the industry. And, you know, we need a little bit of good news right now because things are challenging. But when we look to the future, I think that we can kind of see the trajectory that this industry is on and it is exciting and i'm looking forward to hopefully having you back again and we can talk about some of the additional things that you're doing that'll be fantastic yes i would be happy to join you anytime i've looked forward to doing this since we talked in texas and uh everybody i work with has been asking me you know when when are you when are you recording so uh, i'll be able to let them know and uh they can watch the the link here in the near future Sounds good. Scott, if there's one thing you want the listeners to take away from today's conversation, what's that one thing? Dana is an innovative company and we've innovated for 115 years and we're going to keep right on doing that. Um, The products that we are in development right now are going to change the industry. And uh, I just hope everybody's along for the ride and uh, part part of the transformation. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and we've been speaking with Scott Donnelly of Dana Incorporated. To learn more, go to SpicerParts.com. You can specifically learn more about the Spicer Parts we were talking about earlier. Scott, thank you for being on the podcast. Jamie, always a pleasure. Thank you. Have you subscribed to the podcast yet? Go to heavydutypartsreport.com today to subscribe to the podcast, and don't forget to give us a five-star rating and review on the podcast player of your choice. I'd like to remind everyone to focus on cost per mile over purchase price and let's keep those trucks and trailers rolling.